before the Word of God tonight. We come before it expectantly. Holy Spirit, I put myself into your hands for your Word says that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we depend on you, greater one, because without you and without the anointing, we're nothing. Can do nothing. But we're not without you. And we thank you that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For Jesus has anointed me tonight to preach and to teach this Word accurately, please. Opening the eyes, the ears, and the understanding and the minds of all of us together that we might know more about Jesus and to receive revelation from heaven about this life of faith, and this life in the kingdom of God. And we give you the praise and the honor and the glory. And once again, I ask you tonight that not one person leave this place, not one person watching online, not one person in the sound of my voice will end this service without being empowered and without being touched by the power of the almighty God. Spirit, soul, and body, financially and socially. We thank you for it. And we give you the praise for it. And because of that name, we fully expect it to come to pass. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Say, well, Brother Copeland, uh, what are you going to talk about? <laughs> Guess. <laughs> His name is Jesus. And we're going to talk about faith. Oh, Brother Copeland, I've heard that. Well, you want to come teach it? No. The Apostle Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, but it's God that giveth the increase. Now, if this is the first time that you've ever heard the word of faith taught and preached, then I'm planting. If you've heard it before, I'm watering. But either way, it's God that giveth the increase. Amen. Say it. I receive, I receive the, increase. the increase in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. I, take it. I take it. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. And co, and you know what you have to do if you're going to, you know, if you're going to start talking about faith, you have to go to Mark chapter 11. Now, the reason that we study this from the 11th chapter of the book of Mark is just simply because the Holy Spirit through Mark, the author, goes into more explicit details about how God's faith works. He is a faith God. I heard, uh, well, It's been so long ago, I don't remember now whether I per heard him personally or somebody told me about it, but um, anyway, it was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that 
God doesn't have faith. He is the object of our faith. Amen. Well, now, wait a minute. That's interesting, isn't it? Um, do you have faith? Yes. Where'd you get it? I thought he didn't have any. <laughs> that kind of work, that kind of quit in a hurry, didn't it? <laughs> Amen. Now, yeah, thank you, Lord. Hold your place in the book of Mark. Let's look at that in, in Hebrews chapter 11. The hall of fame of faith. In fact, <laughs> I've, had, I've had this question. Why do you teach on it so much? Well, in the first place, you can't get saved without it. You can't live the faith life without it for the just live by faith. You can't walk the Christian walk without it because we walk by faith and not by sight. You can't fight the Christian fight without it because we fight the good fight of faith. And you can't overcome the world without it because this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And if that wasn't enough, it's impossible to please him without it. Amen. 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 Now stop and think about it a moment though. It's impossible to please anybody without faith. Um, you know, I sure do love you, brother, but I don't believe nothing you say. <laughs> now, now, that just go, try that with your wife sometime. <laughs> I love you, darling. I just don't believe nothing you <laughs> No, no, no. See, that's, I love you is very pleasing, but I won't do what you say is not. So it's impossible. All things are possible with God. Not that. It's impossible for God to lie. And it's just as impossible to please him without faith as it is for him to lie. Did you ever wonder why it's impossible to please him without it? Without it, <laughs> he can't do anything for you. He's not trying to get anything from you. He's trying to get things to you. Amen. 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 What does he do with your tithe? He spends it on your spiritual development. He doesn't need the money. He needs you. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Well, it's impossible to please him without. Well, well listen to this. Romans 4, 16. Therefore, it is by faith so that it might be by grace. And grace is the big thing. Grace, unmerited favor and so forth. Grace is God's overwhelming desire to treat you and me like sin never happened. Because as far as God is concerned, the sin problem is finished. Jesus bore it, defeated it, Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, without faith, there's no connection to the grace. And without the grace, everything Jesus did is for nothing. Faith is huge. Hebrews chapter 11. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, Faith is always now. Faith is always present tense. The past is the past and hope is the future. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things, natural material things, which are seen were not made of things which do appear. They weren't, they didn't, it didn't say they were made of nothing. It said they were made out of something you can't see. So faith is the creative 
force that brought all of this into existence. Now, back to uh, Mark 11, please. Verse 11, Jesus has just come through Jerusalem riding the little colt. Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, and so forth. And in verse 11, and Jesus entered into the Jerusalem and into the temple, and when he looked round about upon all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. On the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not. Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Now notice he said the desired end result. Now he left, you remember he said, the words that I speak unto you, 14th chapter of John, they're not my own. It's the Father that dwells within me. He does the works. He said, no man eat fruit of you again hereafter forever. He left it up to the Father that dwells within. What happened to it? He didn't say dry up from the roots. He didn't say anything about the roots. He just said, ain't nobody going to eat nothing off you ever. You over, you done. But he let he left the rest of it up to him. Very important. Speaking the end result. He wasn't responsible. Why? Because he already heard his father say that. Don't take long to get happy around here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, when he's got a house full of people like you, I'm telling you what, you can pull the preach out of, out of a cedar stump. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> now, his disciples heard it. So how far away was this tree? Well, it was far enough away that you could see it had leaves, but couldn't see that it didn't have fruit on it. So that, you know, it was several steps away, and yet they heard it. It was important for them to hear it. They came to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves, and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught. Now, cleaning the temple was not the mission. The teaching was the mission. But the place had to be cleaned up before you could teach. Is it not written, my house should be called of all nations a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves? That's the message that he preached. But it took till evening to preach it. Notice it. The scribes and chief priests heard it and saw how they might destroy him, for they feared him because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. And when evening was come, he went out of the city. He cleaned that house and preached all day. Yes. <laughs> My kind of preacher. Preach all day, brother. <laughs> Amen. And when evening was come, he went out of the city. Now, If you look at the timeline, he spoke to it in the morning, preached all day, in the evening went back to Bethany. Nobody said anything about that tree. You know they looked at it. <laughs> no way. They're going to walk past that tree without looking at it, seeing maybe it may, may be gone, you know. We don't know. That's 12 hours, and there was no visible change in that tree. Words are the most powerful things in the, in the universe. We live in a word-created, 
word dominated, word upheld system. Amen. Not realizing that our own words govern our own lives. And it's not the thing you say a little bit, it's the stuff you say all the time. Most Christian people, well, just about everybody, that are have really having a rough time. And they account what's happening in their lives to the devil. Principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world. They, and not wrongly so, not knowing <coughs> that what actually is taking place is the result of what they've been saying all their lives. And you opened the door for the devil to get in there. You built him a nest. Not knowing, but hey. Well, I don't see why you have to be so picky about words. I didn't mean it when I said it it tickled me to death. I know, but you have an accuser, and he's a legalist. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and in the morning, now this is roughly 24 hours after Jesus spoke to that tree. In the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold, the tree, tree, fig tree which you cursed is withered away. Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. Now here's what he has undertake, he, what he is undertaking to do. He is, he just demonstrated how the faith of God works. That's what that tree gave its life for, was to demonstrate that. Have faith in God. The cross reference says, have the faith of God. And uh, other translations and, and Greek scholars say that it literally says, have the God kind of faith. Well, of course, it's faith of God. It is. God kind of faith. So now here's the way Jesus, this is what he demonstrated, and this is the way the force of faith is released. This is the way it works. For verily I say unto you, whosoever, so this Faith is governed by spiritual law. By what law? The law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. It's a spiritual law. A law is something that is predictable, and when the proper elements of that law function properly. It works exactly the same way every time, and it can be depended on. Amen. Amen. You remember Romans 8, 2? For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. See, natural, physical laws were created by spiritual law. So natural physical laws, the laws of physics mirror spiritual laws. And people, I don't, I don't well, I started to say I don't understand why, why people think this, but, but I really do because it's, uh, religion has painted this, this loosey-goosey, you don't ever know what God's going to do and who can figure it out anyway idea. Well, you couldn't ever understand God. You can if he's the teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. You shut up and listen. I mean, 
And the reason why you can understand God is because He's a spirit being and you're a spirit being. And after all, He created you. And He created you to understand Him. It's religion that has had the idea that, that, that God way up there and man is this little afterthought down there. I like what Keith Moore says. He said, you know, uh, generally people have the idea that God created all of this, put the world out there and gave it a spin and forgot about it and said, well, there you go. <laughs> no, he didn't, didn't like that. He is very involved. Yes, Amen. Amen. It's men that spin it and walk away from it, but not him. Hallelujah. Now, <laughs> have the God kind of faith. Have the faith of God. Now, let's stop right there. He said, have it. He didn't say pray for it. Nowhere in the Bible does it say pray for faith. He said, have it. Faith come up. Faith come up by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, Romans 10, 17. That's the only way it comes. Yeah, but I believe. I love you, darling, but I really don't care what you believe. <laughs> I don't care what I believe. But the Bible said, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. This Word, also in the 10th chapter of Romans, is called the Word of Faith, because God's Word preached, taught, meditated, read, spoken, creates confidence, because God's faith is in His Word. He filled it with faith when He released it. Amen. And f the Word of God is spirit food. Yes, the born again human spirit yes. it, it must have it. Amen. Jesus said that, you know, in Matthew 4, 4, man does not live, Jesus said it, man doesn't live by bread or food alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.